Hey, 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 happy Friday. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by TheGamingGang.com, of which I happen to be the Grand Poobah. Okay, so I'm the founder, I'm the editor-in-chief, I'm kind of the jack-of-all-trades. So it is Friday. Welcome aboard. It's Friday evening. It's June 7th, 2019. This is episode 300 and... 14 of the Daily Dope. Uh, all right, saw something popping up here on my on my computer. It's like, hey, what are you doing? I was like, oh, it better not be a Windows update. <laughs> Tell me it's going to, oh, we got an update. I'll be smacking this around. It wasn't. It was just a, like a Windows notification that popped up. Anyway, it is Friday night, TGIF. And what in the world is going on with our date? We're not getting a date showing up. Hold on. What in the world? It's uh, coming up blank. That's weird because I just took care of that earlier. Let's see what's going on here. Just gonna, yeah, hey, you know, it's Friday. I'm sure hardly anybody's watching the show tonight, so because it's Friday night, it's springtime. I mean, come on, Let's see what we got here. Taking a quick peek, going to my news. Oh, you son of a gun, where did it go? It has disappeared. So, I know what I could do here, I know how to get it back. I know what I did. <laughs> uh, yeah, I accidentally deleted it. You're like a dummy. Like a dummy. Uh, let's pop back in here. Let's see what we got. There we go. So, see, the thing is, on on my desktop that I I use to render the show and do my videos and all that other stuff. I have uh, a solid state drive, but it's not real big. So I try to just delete everything as quickly as I possibly can, because uh, especially videos, videos take up uh, a lot of space. So anyway, it is Friday, June 7th, 2019. This is a live show. Do you want to point out chat is available on YouTube if you are watching live? If so, do you want to point out chat's not on screen? It's one of the ways that I keep some of the stranger commenters at bay, but I do pay attention. So if you want to say howdy, or maybe you've got a question, or maybe there's something about walking in Burano that you would like to get a closer look at. Yes, because tonight I am unboxing and taking a first look at Walking in Burano, which uh, was a little bit of a change from what we had planned as of yesterday. Yesterday, I was talking about we were going to unbox and take a look at the most recent Smash Up expansion, which I might just shoot a standalone video for that. But uh, actually, Walking in Burano just showed up in the mail today, and I thought, hey, you know what? Why not get it out right now? and uh, do an unboxing and a first look. So that'll be coming up in just a bit. Do you want to say, if uh, you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you check out some of the videos on the Gaming Gang channel and you like them, please subscribe. And of course, be sure to ring that little bell because that will not only notify you when there's a new video up, which of course, with me going to Origins next week, no live shows for most of the week, so a lot of videos are going to uh, pop up there after the fact. But not only do you get notified when there's new videos that have been uploaded, you'll also know when the stream goes live within about five minutes or so. So, of course, if you do like the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to check out thegaminggang.com too, the home website 
There's loads and loads going on there that's not on the show as well. And of course, if you like any of this, please tell a friend. In fact, tell two friends. Help spread the word. So I've got uh, a good amount of tabletop gaming news tonight. A good variety of tabletop gaming news as well. So I'm going to jump on into that. Do you want to point out if you are not a fan of the tabletop gaming news of the day, be sure to look in the show notes below and there are timestamps you can skip right past and jump right on into the unboxing. If you're not watching live, if you're watching live, go have a sandwich or something. Come back like 20 minutes. All right, let's jump into the news because Asmo Day Editions is bringing the French card game Bahamas to North America. And here's the dope. The holdup was perfect. A sound plan. Millions in a bag. Fleeing by plane. Yes, really a sound one. Everyone begins to relax, but suddenly the engine sputters. Then the plane begins to fall. Yes, the holdup was perfect, and they had anticipated everything. Everything but enough parachutes to go around. Play your role amongst 10 characters in Bahamas and steal, lie, threaten, do everything you can to get the biggest part of the loot and land safely. In more detail, each player receives a character sheet at random, each with a different special power, along with one starting card, one action card, and two cash cards. Money, money, money! Among those starting cards are two to five parachutes, depending on the number of players, and you'll want one of these to survive at game's end. Use a number of dice equal to the player count minus one. Choose a starting player at random. This player rolls all the dice, uses one of them, drawing an action or cash card, stealing an action or cash card from an opponent, or using their special power. Then they choose the next player who will take a turn. Once all the dice have been used, whoever didn't get to use a die becomes the starting player for the next round. A crash card is shuffled into the bottom four cards of the action deck, and when it's drawn, everyone without a parachute or the lifeboat hiding in the action deck plunges to their death. Ouch. And this is supposed to be a family game for kids 10, 10 and up, huh? Whichever surviving character has the most money wins. Alternatively, if one player collects the three different FBI cards prior to the crash, this player manages to land the plane safely, bust everyone else, and win. Bahamas is for 48 players, ages 10 and up, plunging to their deaths. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know your kids. I don't know if I'd be busting it out with 10-year-olds. Plays in about 30 to 45 minutes and will carry an MSRP of $19.99 when it arrives a little later on this month. So, a lot of Asmo Day related news today for some strange reason. Uh, this seems like this could be fun. Uh, you know, kind of a little bit of a party game. You can get up to eight players into it. I just, I just don't know if I'd be busting out with 10-year-old kids. Not only are you criminals, but some of them are going to die. So, I don't know. So, Nefarious Coel is joining me in chat. And Nefarious says, when I flee a chain of islands, I go full DB Cooper. Hopefully not full DB Cooper, because then that means um, you probably died. <laughs> so, you don't want to go full DB Cooper. Maybe partial DB Cooper. Anyway, there is another release this month. It's by way of Asmo Day, but it's from Backspinal Games, and it's Ninja Squad. Here's the dope. The evil shogun of Amori has been destroying the community with crippling taxes and physical brutality. I gotta be a little more worried about the brutality. Action needs to be taken to stop this by the Ninja Squad. The first half of Ninja Squad is a cooperative game in which players take on the roles of, you guessed it, ninjas, and try to sneak past the guards and lanterns to get to the Shogun's palace. The reverse side of the game board is used for the second half of the game, which is a player versus player race game through the Imperial Gardens. The first ninja to reach the Blue Forest will claim the glory. Yes. Ninja Squad contains four chibi-styled unpainted minis. It is for two to four players, ages 14 and up. Takes about 30 minutes to play. 
and will carry an MSRP of $34.99 when it arrives also this month. So I like the uh, like the minis. I think the minis look pretty cool. Granted, there's only four of them. A Libertarian Ninjas. Yes, there you go. Libertarian Ninjas. Uh, in fact, I believe uh, they are independent voters too who uh, long for the days of Ross Perot. Don't know. Do you not know? Uh, I, I have to say, I find it kind of interesting because they are soda pop miniatures that are in this, but back Spindle Games no longer really has a relationship, as far as I know, with Ninja Division. So, which is actually Soda Pop Games, or Soda Pop Productions, I think it's called now. So, yeah, kind of uh, kind of interesting. I looked to see if Backspindle was going to be at Origins. They are not. So, because um, when I did the Dance of the Fireflies review, they really liked it. So, uh, and they seemed like good folks. They seemed like pretty friendly folks. As Pinky comes strolling down here to start making noise. <sighs> Pinky, you were down here all afternoon making noise. Mm -hmm. Didn't you make enough? All right, my third uh, Asmodee-ish related news piece is Plathead Games. Because they've got a new adventure book game. It's on the horizon, and I've got some dope on Aftermath. Aftermath is an adventure book game in which players take on the role of small critters struggling to survive and thrive in a big, dangerous world. Humans have mysteriously vanished, and the remnants of civilization are quickly being reclaimed by nature and the animals who still remain. In the game, you play as a misfit band of critters known by their colony as Providers. There's the guinea pig with anger issues. A hamster that talks fast and drives faster. A small mouse with keen eyes and a lot to prove. And a mysterious vole who's borderline feral. I would have to say, I think this is the first board game I have ever heard of that contains a vole. These characters each have their own personalities, playstyles, and personal goals. You'll leave the safety of your colony and venture out into the abandoned world on one of 20 plus story-driven missions, and side missions. Scavenge the ruins of mankind in search of food and supplies for your colony. But beware, the world is filled with bandits and predators, and you must fight or flee to stay alive. Yes, the night is dark and full of terrors. Return to your colony with resources and information that will help your friends and family survive. Grow your colony and keep it safe by building structures and improvements with the spoils of your adventures, but plan accordingly, for the colony will face hardship each time you leave it. Aftermath is for two to four players, ages 14 and up, plays in about 60 to 90 minutes. It will carry an MSRP of $84.95 when it arrives this fall. So one thing I do notice is there was another game that's coming out from Plaid Hat. It's coming out ahead of this. But it's a card game. It looked like it was a card game. I had a news piece about it a few weeks ago. And it's a, it's a card game, and each of the players represents a different faction. So, And I remember it had the mice. I think it has, like, lizards and things like that. So uh, kind of interesting that uh, there are two games that are coming out that have kind of, you know, the same background, backstory. So this is actually from the designer of Stuffed Fables. So, I don't know. I have not checked out the uh, um, adventure book games. So, look kind of cool. They do look kind of cool. So, Nefarious was uh, saying, trying to remember Pro's famous one-liner, but my memory roll failed. Uh, yeah, I can't remember that either. <laughs> I remember when Dana Carvey did Dana Mod Saturday Night Live. And... Um, Hartman did. Phil Hartman was playing the uh, the admiral who was the the running mate who just had like major brain farts during the debate. So there's there was a skit where Perot is driving the admiral around and uh, is trying to like ditch him in a forest. It was pretty pretty funny. But yeah, but yeah, always always had him do a voice like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about some RPGs because there's big savings. 
over at Bundle of Holding with their Mutant Epic Bundle. Epoch Bundle, I guess I should say. And here's the dope. Adventurer. The Mutant Epoch Bundle presents William McAuslin's Gonzo post-apocalyptic tabletop role-playing game, The Mutant Epoch, from Outland Arts. In the twisted future of 24th century America, engineered humans form dig teams with aberrationist mutants, free-willed android mercenaries, and self-aware robots to uncover relic treasures in ancient ruins. Through force of arms, these excavators survive against barbaric skullox, warmorts, moaners, reptili, and bipedal rats. Grab your gas mask, knee pads, crossbow, and junk armor, and answer the pleas of hard-pressed humanity in a world of post-apocalyptic adventure. For just $7.95, you will get all three titles in the starter collection, retail value 40 bucks, as PDF ebooks, including the complete Mutant Epoch Hub Rules, or rulebook, the Crossroads Region Gazetteer, and Mutant Bestiary 1. And if you pay more than the threshold price of $18.51, you'll level up and also get the entire bonus collection with five more source books and scenarios worth an additional $49, including the location guide Pitford, Gateway to the Ruins, the Creatures of the Apocalypse Codex, the Adventures The Mall of Doom and Beyond Red Crater, and the Excavator Monthly Compendium. 10% of your payments after the payment gateway fees will be donated to this offer's designated charity, Doctors Without Borders. So, uh, so Nefarious is like, ooh, Mutant Epoch. You know, uh, before that, he was saying, uh, rest in peace, Phil Hartman. Yeah, that was a bummer. I remember, I remember I was at work and, uh, heard that news. I was like, what? I was like, gosh, he was in so many things too. He was in news radio at the time. He was doing Simpsons. He was doing so much stuff. See, he was supposed to be a super nice guy. But anyway, um, yes, Mune Epoch. Uh, I am a little familiar with this. I have not actually read it, and Nefarious seems like uh, pretty uh, that they're pretty well aware of this. But yeah, as far as I understand, McOslin writes all of this stuff himself and does a lot of the artwork, as Nefarious is pointing out in chat. But uh, I find it pretty amazing that uh, that's so. And there, these aren't the only books that are out there. I think there's like a monthly uh, kind of like newsletter that comes out and there's a website that you get if you're a member or I think maybe if you purchase your books through the website, you become a member of. Seems like there's a lot of stuff. And it's kind of funny because recently I was kind of looking around because I still have a soft spot for Gamma World. So I know uh, my nephew and his friends are all into Fallout. So I had thought of maybe um, doing a little post-apocalyptic role-playing game and yeah, just do maybe a short uh, short campaign. And uh, I was kind of taking a look at Mutant Epoch, but uh, pretty crunchy, a little crunchier than than I want to bust out with, uh, with the kids. So, but uh, pretty interesting. And I do want to point out, it is for a mature audience. There are some, some mature themes that are uh, actually broached topics i should say as well in uh, at least in the core book too so nefarious says yeah there's a lot of content yes mick Oslin must never sleep maybe not so my final news piece is about a really well received prehistoric role-playing game that is now available in a revised edition it is in hardcover from dying stylishly games and drive through rpg and i've got the dope on wolf packs and winter snow. This is a time before writing, money, walled settlements, and the many other comforts of civilization. The Ice Age wilderness is harsh and filled with dangerous beasts. Yes, the night is dark and full of tears. The <laughs> in dark forests and the depths of caves, there exist other stranger creatures, mad beasts that are the products of magic. The Ice Age is coming to an end, 
Retreating ice sheets reveal tracts of land unseen for millennia with each spring, and in their wake leave the environment in turmoil. As the snow withdraws, modern humans follow, and every year new tribes of humans enter the Neanderthal's ancestral lands. Against this backdrop, magic begins to emerge as a force in the world, driving the rise in art, jewelry, cave paintings, and figurines that will fascinate later historians some humans begin experimenting with the supernatural, learning to shape the wild forces of the world into controllable spells and items of power. This is a strange prehistoric role-playing game. A revised and expanded version of Wolf Packs and Winter Snow is now available, now with double the page count, glorious full-page illustrations, and huge piles of more content to allow you to run the game straight out of the book with no preparation time. I don't believe that with all of these RPGs that are coming out now. Sure, you can you can run it without prep time, but you're just gonna have a bunch of random encounters in that. Sorry, 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 sorry. This sounds like a cool, cool game, cool source book, but sorry, I'm just not buying it in no prep time. Not if you want to be a good GM. Anyway, back to this. <laughs> Included in this book is everything you'll need to run or play and games set in the Fantasy Ice Age. Inside you'll find quick character generation with classes for human hunters, skilled experts and magicians, and for the rapes of Neanderthals, optional rules to play as lurking mutants, unnatural Morlocks, orphan children, Neanderthal alchemists, mystics worshiping strange powers, or cannibalistic Wendigos, systems for food, weather, and sickness that drive home the struggle for survival, quick, dirty, brutal combat, rules for gathering and leading a Stone Age tribe, a magic system that combines familiar fancy and casting with the dangers of experimentation in a time before spellbooks, guides to running a game of exploration in the wilderness or deep underground, including procedures to generate landscapes and cavern complexes as you play. Systems create unique monsters on the fly, as well as optional rules to hack your game with such as a system of brutal permanent wounds. <laughs> Various post-human beings for PCs to work toward becoming. It's all in a rule system that will be familiar with any fan of the OSR. Stripped down, streamlined, and customized to match the Stone Age setting. The Wolf Packs and Winter Snow revised color premium hardcover book. No PDFs at the moment is available for $55 at drive-thru RPG. So I had heard uh, originally, this has been a, uh, the original edition came out a few years ago. I wanna say two, three years ago maybe. And I had always heard some uh, some good stuff about wolf packs and winter snow, especially if you're looking at running something that's kind of a prehistoric setting. I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I could pull that off. So, you know, uh, Clan of the Cave Bear, just as a role-playing game, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know if I'd want to, want to play it or what. It does sound interesting. I got to say, it, uh, it does sound interesting. So Nefarious says the night is brisk and full of furries. So, uh, hey, Hubcam210 is in the house. Good to see you. Thanks for coming back and joining me once again. So, as I mentioned, we're going to crack open Walking in Burano in a few moments. Just want to point out uh, once again that uh, I am going to Origins. I am trying to uh, trying to iron out a few, few things cost-wise. So, still got the Origins game sale going on. There are about 18 games that are still available. They are games that I've either uh, reviewed or some are extra copies, so they are still in shrink. You can go to thegaminggang.com and check them out. Do want to point out, these are only going to be available till uh, the 10th. So that'll be Monday because I plan on, I, I've already, the items I've already sold, I have shipped out. I'm, I'm shipping them out like within 24 hours. So um, anyway, I was going to say that uh, if there's anything here that, that you're interested in, got to strike while the iron's hot because... Whatever I don't sell is going to end up going with me to Gen Con to their auction. So um, you will not have a shot at it again unless you are going to Gen Con 
and you happen to be in the auction room when they come up for auction. So should point that out. There's uh, role playing games, there's family games, there's just you know, board games, Euro games. So uh, quite a bit, quite a bit floating around. Anyway, just wanted to uh, to throw that out there, toss that out there. All right. Anyway, um, what's coming up next week? Down now. So on Monday's show, I don't know. I, I'm I'm sort of up in the air on what I should be doing. Uh, I, there will be a Monday show. Uh, there probably will not be a Tuesday show because I will be leaving uh, in the wee hours on Wednesday to uh, head to Origins in Columbus. And it's about a seven and a half hour drive. So uh, I'm probably not going to have a Tuesday show. Now, it is possible I might shoot a few little standalone videos over the weekend and uh, have those and release those kind of during the week. So not positive on that yet. All depends on how much free time I've got. But uh, as far as Origins, I'm going to see if I can possibly actually release some videos while I'm there. Only thing is I like to shoot B-roll. So for an example, let's say I'm inter I'm doing an interview with Stephen Bonacore and he's talking about a game. I like to have B-roll where I'm actually showing you the game as opposed to just Stephen and I talking. Problem is my laptop cannot handle the rendering of that. Uh, whereas if I just add a, like an opening, little little intro opening and my little outro to the to the interview, I can do that easily. I've got a program that I can actually kind of piece videos together pretty quickly and pretty easily. So I don't know, we will find out. But I've got a lot of interviews set up already for Origins. I only have about maybe three hours of interview time that's not scheduled yet. Now I don't kill myself doing interviews at shows anymore. Because I remember the first few years of the gaming gang, Elliot Miller and I would run all over these convention centers and it's like, ah, uh, no, not anymore. Mm -mm. So I do about five, six interviews a day. So you figure over a period of like four days, that's uh, that's a good number of interviews. So anyway, we will see what's going on on Monday. Uh, what I might do is we might just take a look at Ya Magazine number 12 from Tiny Battle Publishing and my buddy Mark H. Walker who I will be interviewing at Origins as well. So, do also want to point out, why did we suddenly lose that? That is weird. Wow, there's a bunch of stuff that just got deleted here that I was not expecting. That is very, very bizarre. Okay, so, let's see. There we go, ha <laughs> ha. So, as I was going to say, if you like the gaming gang, if you dig the Daily Dope, by all means, keep in mind, it's pretty much a not-for-profit endeavor around here. So, if you do like the show or the website or the channel, please consider making a small donation to Lil Bub's Big Fund and the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Yes, Lil Bub's Big Fund does provide grant monies to organizations around the United States who care for special needs animals who are awaiting adoption. These are not kill shelters that uh, these are these are places where these pets are really taken care of. So these animals might have uh, medication needs. They might have mobility issues. They might be a little long in the tooth. They could be blind. They could be deaf. But still, these loving animals do deserve good homes and they will repay any sort of affection and love that they get a hundredfold. I can tell you that for a fact from past experience. So just wanted to say if uh, if you like the show, if you like the website, consider making a small donation to Lil Bub's Big Fun. And if you do, shoot me an email. My email is jeffmacklear at thegaminggang.com. I will give you a shout out on the following show. Plus, if you ever have a question or maybe there's a company that you want me to take a look at some of their stuff, Feel free, shoot me an email, let me know, and uh, I will see what I can do. All right, so I've got Walking in Burano, and we are going to be doing an unboxing of it right here. It is uh, from AG, 
this is going to be part of their big game night, which is on August 2nd over at, in, at Gen Con. Uh, big game night. If you get your tickets for big game night, you usually get a box full of games. There are three games that are part of big game night this year. Walking in Burano is one of them. Point Salad is the second, and then Curios is the third. Anyway, Walking in Burano is originally a Taiwanese game designed by Wei-Min Ling with artwork provided by Maisher Lee. Taking a guess on that one. The game is for one to four players, ages 14 and up. I'm taking a stab at 14 and up because of small pieces. It does not look as if this is a difficult game to wrap your head around. Plays in about 22, 40 minutes and will carry an MSRP of, uh, I think it's 24.95, 20, yeah, I think it's 24.99. Uh, it's going to hit stores on August 1st, and as I mentioned, it is also part of AEG's big game night at Gen Con. So let me double check. I'm going to double check that uh, MSRP, because that seems a little high. So I will take a quick look here. No, it is $29.99. All right, just wanted to double check, because... Uh, you know, I, I never want to give people the wrong retail info. So let's move on over to the other camera. So Walking in Brano is a pretty small footprint game, as you can see. It's uh, it's not huge. So from my understanding, the game is, and it has actually a little mini expansion included in this. But uh, as far as my understanding is the game, uh, each of the players has been tasked with uh, beautifying a street in Burano. Burano is a, an Italian island, which I believe uh, has a bit of a like Venetian feel to it. So each of the players is hired to or tasked with beautifying a street. And I do believe what you need to do is you need to uh, put together certain cards to appeal to different visitors. And I think the visitors each have kind of like like a victory point total. But we're going to crack this open. We're going to take a look. Let's see what uh, the back of the box says. As I get rid of the shrink wrap. So we can get rid of some of that glare. It says, welcome to Burano, Italy. Walking through the island, you will see these vibrant houses on both sides of the canal. As well as the personalized decorations placed by the inhabitants and shopkeepers. The local government has asked you to refurbish a street in their famed city. Use your creativity to amaze both tourists and locals with your masterpiece of design. Includes solo play variant and colorblind friendly. Cool. Okay. So let's open this on up. So we got a little rule book. Take a look at that first. Not a whole lot of rules, I'll tell you that right there. So we get an overview of the game. Goal of the game, place the floor cards in order to receive a visit from different characters. They will score points based on the various symbols on the houses. The player with the most points at the end of the game wins. So we got floor cards, we got character cards, we have scaffold cards, we've got coins, regulatory bonus tokens. Okie doke. Got a score pad, and we got a starting player token, which is a cat. So it's showing us the setup for the game. How to play. The game is played over seven rounds, beginning with starting player. Each player takes a turn in clockwise order. You can do one of the following. Acquire three floor cards, acquire two floor cards and take a coin, or acquire one floor card and take two coins. I'm going to guess that uh, you're going to use those coins to actually pay for those floors that you're building. So we got a little bit of an example of play here as well. Golden placing rules. So we've got placement examples. Okay, so we see that uh, there's certain ways that you have to be able to put things together. Visits from characters, conditional. Conditional, what, what do you have, mandatory visits? It's like, yeah, well, we, we took the prisoners out of jail and we're making them 
go visit these houses. Uh, so we've got tourists, we've got inhabitants. I, I remember I saw the artwork for some of the some of the characters, and there's like a police officer who doesn't look very happy. It's like, okie doke. All right, so game end and final scoring. So we got points for characters, points for shop, points for regulatory bonuses. I just find it funny. I mean, <laughs> with regulatory bonuses. Uh, lose points for closed windows. Okay. And the player with the most points wins. In case of a tie, the tie player with more coins wins. And if there's still a tie, the tie player with more cats in their houses wins. And if there's still a tie, the tied players have to have a knife fight to determine who's the victor. Now it just says you share the victory. So let's see. Solo game setup. There we go. And then we got some FAQs. All in all, we've got 15 pages, but I mean, really, this is a really small rule book. Looks pretty easy to get into. So that is the little rule book. So let's take a look what else we've got here. So we've got the score sheet. Got a score pad. Is it dual sided? No, boo. Ah, that's okay. There's four, I mean, there's 40 in here. So we've got that. Looks like we've got uh, some player aids. Looks like we've got a few of them. Looks like we got four of them. That's cool. I like that. So we show the different tourists. So we've got, uh, looks like we've got four tourists and a few inhabitants. So we've got uh, probably the mayor or something. Is that Santa Claus? Santa Claus lives in this town? That's kind of funny. Hey, Flaming Huron's popping in. Good to see you, Flaming Huron. So, uh, so these are the different inhabitants of Burano. So each of the players will get one of these. And we've got, uh, got a punch board here that looks like these are punched so well cut so well they're already popping out so we've got the coins I, got, I like that the coins have a metallic finish to them so we've got one and three then we've got uh, these square counters here Let's say three and three they th three on both here's a little it's a little starting player token with the cat that's a little standee I see right there there's a little notch for you so you got a little standee there so we've got that uh looking to see where the other ones other coins fell out to pop those back in there so we've got that got some baggies for the counters cool uh cool little tuck box here so in fact it's got a little fold up to break up the cards so that's interesting. So we got that. So then we got two decks of cards. So it looks like these are the characters. Looks like these are the floors. So I'm going to crack these open. We're going to zoom in a little bit to get a better look at these as well. So uh, as I was talking the uh, yesterday, I thought it was funny how <coughs> I had gotten a comment saying that uh, I take too long doing the unboxings and I talk too much and things like that. And I was like, uh, so you do realize this is a live show, right? <laughs> they were like, no. They did not know that it's a live show. So I like taking my time doing the unboxing. We're having fun. People are just hanging out, doing a little chat. So we got Flaming Huron, we got Nefarious Coel, and we've got Hubcam 210. Like the, uh, the like the uh, knife fighting comment I made. So let me grab a quick sip here. It's, it's dry down here. Drier than normal in the duct tape studio. I should say duct tape studios. Sounds even more impressive. So we got the characters here. So let's flip this. Oh, okay. So we've got... Uh, Got a little bit of another sort of uh, new new inhabitants. Huh, okay. Oh, you know what? I bet you this is a little mini expansion that was shown on the front of the box. So there's a fisherman and a painter. 
I bet you that's what this is. So we got the painter. That's a chimney sweep there. Uh, oh, maybe it's there's three of them. Maybe it's a painter, chimney sweep, and fisherman. So there we go. We got the game set up. Kind of funny how there's these little cards in here, kind of telling you uh, what's going on. So yeah, so there are three new inhabitants. I'm not sure why they're only showing. Oh wait, on the back. There he goes. There's the chimney sweep. So. So looking at these, there's various different, uh, I believe there's various different icons, uh, symbols and things like that, that you're looking to build in your floors uh, on in the houses and shops on your street that are going to appeal to these, these people. So I was wondering if these change up, but these look pretty much the same. Looks like they got two cards for each of these new inhabitants okay so here we go with the game set up these are the scaffold cards the scaffolding cards we saw so we've got uh it's like that's a ground floor and it looks like this is an upper floor so it looked as if you could you could build a floor like say like a second level because it looks like everything's like three levels for the uh for these buildings but it looked like you could have like a second level as long as you had a scaffold underneath so you could actually build it up here that's what it kind of looked like in the rules so okay so got the scaffolding so then we've got some uh some other inhabitants this looks like a grandmother there i bet she's probably like the mayor maybe a student oh i think he's probably a tourist got that another scaffold card uh right so so we've got it looks like there's a couple of copies another scaffold card kind of weird way that the the cards are like correlated here so there we go there's santa claus so right so santa claus lives in this town so i thought he was up in the north pole when it's not christmas time but it appears that he actually lives uh in burano italy when he's not delivering toys so uh interesting i did not know that see you learn something new every day uh actually it looks like we got three of this guy in the pink shirt yeah so far we got three who looks like a tourist another scaffold got uh some new newer characters here that are popping up she's obviously got to be a tourist Notice the artwork is is a little uh, little anime ish, which makes sense because this game was originally a Taiwanese uh, game. See, there's the police officer. I said I saw the artwork and he doesn't look very happy. I don't know if I want him visiting the the houses or shops. Bet you that's another tourist. Uh, looks like we got a waiter. There's the cop again. Another scaffold. And the mayor again. So I would take a guess, maybe based on the number of points that these these characters are worth. Maybe the the ones who are worth the most points are fewer cards for. So like the mayor as an example. So kind of give you an idea. Some of these some of these cards they've got on the back of them. So if you got a cat. It's worth three, three victory points. Oh, okay. So where are the, okay, so what I'm curious about, so where are the single victory points? Because these say three on both sides. So that kind of, kind of throws me off a little bit. So we've got three here and three here. So where are your single victory points? I don't know. We'll have to find out. Okay, so those are the characters and the scaffolds and the little mini expansion with the three new inhabitants. So now let's take a look at the floors. And there are more cards in this deck. So, and we've got various different colors. So, I'm taking a guess 
these are the third floor because we have the three bars running across. These are the second floor, second story, I guess we could say, too. Because it's got the two bars, and then these are, like, ground floor. So I can see, yes, they are ground floor, because how else would this guy be walking? Oh, so we've got different people. You know, it's funny, because I saw some of the character cards showed, like, a certain number of people. So I would take a guess that it's probably how many people you have on your entire street. Hey, Kabuki Kid is popping in. Good deal. Good to see you, Kabuki Kid. Happy Friday, everybody. TGIF, I must say. Cool. So we've got all these different plants. We've got all these different colored plants. Looks like that's a shop. Hey, we see a cat. Looking for the cats here. So we got flowers, more cats. Because uh, cats on your street will draw certain people in. I think shops on your street will draw certain people in. So these look like these are all shops. <laughs> Cat hanging off the awning. Okay. Oh, it's an ice cream shop. That's why. It's a couple ice cream shops. Well, well. Uh, I wonder what color has to do with this. I wonder if uh, any of the color... Because you notice these are all different colored buildings here. It's a pizza place. Another ice cream shop. Dress shop. Pizza. Wow, a lot of pizza places in uh, Burano. A lot of, um, well, I guess I could under, I could see a lot of cappuccino places. And uh, another dress shop. So these are the, those were first floor. These are, now we got the second floor. Which uh, I think these are going to just be more along the lines of just windows. So, uh, and I think this is a closed window. And closed windows are actually bad. So there's a cat jumping from one to the other. So these are all the second story. <laughs> a couple cats there. Yes, I am a cat guy. What can I tell you? We've got two. One of them's mine. That's uh, Smokey, who, if you watch the show all the time, you will have seen Smokey on occasion sit on my lap as the show begins. It's been a, a, been a couple of weeks since she was doing that. Because I've been downstairs here more um, more doing some stuff, prepping for the show than usual. Uh, Kabuki Kid says the buildings are very colorful in the real Burano. So that is simply likely why they're colored like that. Yes, I had seen that it's supposed to be very, very colorful. So. Cool. Okay, so that's these are all the second story. So, of course, uh, these are no doubt face down when you're when you're drawing your cards. Because uh, I remember it gives, you have an option during your turn to either draw three cards, take, a, take two cards and a coin, or take one card and um, get one coin. So Kabuki Kids says there are two Kitty House 2. Yes! So, uh, yeah, Pinky's the, the older cat. So, the cat that was here when I came here, so. All right, so these are the third floor. Another cat hanging out. Got some flowers. So, cats, flowers, people, closed windows, they all seem like they come into the, uh, come into account for the scoring. So, I like the artwork. I think the artwork's kind of cool, and I get a kick out how the little cats are doing different things. Some are sleeping, some are jumping. Some are climbing. There's another one climbing up there. All right, so and then these are the uh, these are the roofs. These are the rooftops. Okay, cool. So, zoom back out a little bit. So we've got the different floor cards. We've got the different character cards. We have a couple of baggies for our counters. We've got a punch board with those counters. We've got a score sheet with 40, uh, I should say score pad with 40 score sheets in it. And we've got four player aids and 
we've got the 16 page rule book. And that is what we find when we take everything outside the box for walking in Burano. And I should have a review of this pretty, pretty quickly. I'm thinking I might actually bring this with me to Origins because uh, I'm going to hang out with Herman Lutman a bit. Uh, Julie uh, Hearn from Greenbrier Games, I'm probably going to run into and stuff like that. So we're probably going to do some gaming. And uh, I know Herman, uh, <laughs> and it's funny because Herman's a designer of all these, you know, um, like war games and like uh, he's done the, the, uh, the, the, like the, the 50 foot high Colossi and Invaders from Dimension X for Tiny Battle. He's done all, a lot of um, a lot of historical simulation, a lot of conflict sims, but he's he's into all different games now, so uh, might get a chance to actually play. So did want to point out, Walking in Burano is one of the games that is part of AEG's big game night uh, that they're having at Gen Con as well as PAX Unplugged. So it is Walking in Burano, Curios, and Point Salad. This is uh, going to hit stores the day before the Gen Con big game night, as far as I understand. So uh, the game is for one to four players, ages 14 and up. As long as your kids don't swallow stuff, that looks like, that looks to me like a game that's for 10 and up. Uh, plays in about 20 to 40 minutes and does carry an MSRP of $29.99. So the one thing you don't get from the box art is the smell of the water or the smell of fish. <laughs> I, not that I don't like fish, but all right. So that is it for tonight's show. As I mentioned, Monday's show, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but uh, keep an eye peeled. There might be a couple of short standalone videos that uh, will pop up this weekend as I prep for Origins Game Fair. So, but I will be back on Monday, probably no show Tuesday. And of course, the rest of the week, I will be in Columbus, Ohio. Anyway, as I like to point out, when you're not watching The Daily Dope or hanging out on the Gaming Gang YouTube channel, please go visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. By now, you know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Everybody, you join me in chat. Kabuki Kid. Uh, Hubcam 210, Nefarious Coel, as well as Flaming Huron. Thank you so much for hanging out on a Friday night. I wasn't actually expecting anybody probably to pop in and chat. This thing is a Friday night in the spring. But uh, thank you so much for uh, for hanging out. Those of you, of course, who watched live who didn't take part in chat, I don't bite. Say hello. <laughs> Come on, give me a break. And of course, if you're watching after the fact, I truly appreciate that as well. So everyone, enjoy your Friday night. Have a great weekend. Have a very safe weekend. I'll be back on Monday. Thanks again for watching The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang. If you like this episode, be sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you dig the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to check out our previous episode, click right here. And if you want to check out a somewhat randomly selected episode, give a click right down here. It'll be like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You just don't know what you'll get. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'm Jeff McAleer.